And let's dispel once and for all with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. We are not facing a president that doesn't know what he's doing. He knows what he is doing. Let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. Anyone who believes that Barack Obama isn't doing what he's doing on purpose doesn't understand what we're dealing with here. Democrats already circulating that video from last night. Senator Marco Rubio joins us live right now. What went wrong? Well, actually, I, I would pay them to keep running that quick clip because that's what I believe passionately. It's one of the reasons why I'm not running for re-election to the Senate and I'm running for president. This notion and this idea that somehow, all oh, this is an accident. Bra uh, Obamacare was not an accident. Dodd-Frank was not an accident. The deal with Iran was not but an accident. But you're getting pounded for repeating that speech. Well, look, we raised more money last night in the first hour of that debate than any other debate. As far as that message, I hope they keep running it. And I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. Barack Obama, yes, has he hired incompetent people to implement laws and run agencies? Absolutely. But when it comes to the, what he's trying to do to America, it's part of a plan. But even he, after... he has said he wanted to change the country. He's doing it in a way that is robbing us of everything that makes us special. I'm going to keep saying that because that not only is it the truth, it is at the core of our campaign. But even after Chris Christie called you out for what he called canned speeches, 25-second canned speeches, you repeat it again. He says, there you go again. That was not a good moment for you, was it? It's what I believe. And it's what I'm going to continue to say because it happens to be one of the main reasons why I am running. I, this is the greatest country in the history of mankind because of a certain set of principles. Barack Obama wants us to abandon those principles. I think he has spent seven years putting in place policies that ripped them from us, undermining the Constitution undermining free enterprise, undermining our standing in the world, weakening America, apologizing for us on the global stage. The reason why I'm running is if we elect someone like that for the next four years, I think it may be too late for America to turn around. Lindsey Graham, supporting Jeb Bush now, said the case for Marco Rubio is ready to be commander in chief took a hit tonight. Well, Lindsey Graham supporting Jeb Bush. I don't expect that he's going to say positive things about me. Here's the truth of everybody on that stage. No one on that stage last night had, has more experience or a better understanding of the national security issues before this country than I do. And that is the most important thing the president does. The president doesn't run the economy, but the president does have to be commander in chief. No one up Even there though you've never been in an executive position. No one on that stage has a better understanding or has shown better judgment on foreign policy than I have, period. And um, I think I demonstrated that last night. I've demonstrated that throughout the campaign. Speaking of national security and foreign policy, you just heard Donald Trump back here on the issue of waterboarding and torture, said he would authorize something even worse, that sometimes we do have to mirror our enemies. What did you make of that? Well, I don't even know what that means, obviously, so I can't make much of it. I can tell you two things, and I said it last night. The first is we shouldn't really be discussing specific tactics because it allows a terrorist literally to plan for how they'll be interrogated to avoid this, to avoid. But you would reserve the right to order waterboarding. Well, we are going to interrogate terrorists. We're not even doing that now because they're not, there's no one being sent to Guantanamo. But beyond it, I would tell you that we have to understand you cannot interrogate a terrorist as if it was a law enforcement investigation. A law enforcement investigation is about collecting evidence for prosecution. A terrorism interrogation is about finding out information to prevent something from happening, to prevent an attack or to target others who are involved in actively plotting. So you'll have to use different tactics. We're not going to discuss those tactics. Let me suffice it to say that we are going to comply with whatever a civilized nation would do. But you have to treat terrorists differently than you do a street criminal. You also got called out by Jeb Bush and Chris Christie on the issue of abortion because you don't support exceptions for rape and incest. And, and Jeb Bush also said this to CNN. I want to put that up. He said, it's a tough sell to tell a pro-life mother that her daughter has been raped, that she would just have to accept that as a sad fact. This is not an easy decision, but Marco will have to explain that position. What would you say to well, that? Well, a couple of things. Number one, abortion to me is not a political issue. It's a human rights issue. And uh, so if Jeb wants to make it a political issue, that's his right. For me, it's not. Number two, I have supported laws that have exception. The 20-week abortion ban, if it's but passed. But that's not what you believe. Well, uh, first of all, I do require an, uh, an exception for life of the mother because I'm pro-life. Number two, I, I, as I've said, if they pass a law in Congress that has exceptions, I, I, I'll sign it because I want to save lives. The broader point I've made, however, is I believe all human life is worthy of the protection of our laws. That's what I deeply and personally believe. And I'm not going to change my position on something of that, that is so deep in me in order to win an election. So what do you say to that mom, the looker in the eye? It's what a terrible you situation. Her? I mean, a crisis pregnancy, especially as a result of something as horrifying as that, I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm not here saying it's an easy choice. It is a horrifying thing, what you've just described. It's heartbreaking. It is unimaginable, quite frankly. I get it. I really do, and that's why this issue is so difficult. But I believe a human being, an unborn child, has a right to live. 
irrespective of the circumstances by which they were conceived. And I know that that's a not, majority of Americans don't agree with me on that, and that is probably, and that's why any law that limits abortions that passes will almost certainly have exceptions, and I'll sign it with exceptions. But I personally believe that all human life is worthy of the protection of our laws. Immigration, the most talked about issue online last night. You're getting hit for being for the gang of eight, Bill, part of the gang of eight on immigration, also for running away from it. So bottom line, was it a mistake to forge the original deal? No, look, I'm, I, I went to Washington to try to solve problems. Immigration is a huge problem in Florida. And I saw an opportunity to do the best we could in a Senate controlled by liberals like Harry Reid in the hopes that the House would take it up and make it even better happened in the Senate, did not happen in the House. Here's the bottom line. That's not the way we're going to do it when I'm president. We have a majority of Republicans in the House and Senate, and I'm president. We're going to do it differently. We're going to do it the way I want to do it. But which if that's is, the best you could do, you would sign it? Well, I don't think that's the right. I don't think that law, the way it was constructed, could have ever passed, because most certainly, I think, when you look at the House and the broader population in America, people don't want to move on immigration until you can prove to them that illegal immigration is under control. And that's the point I've been making now for three years. We are not going to be able to do this comprehensively. As president, we will not. As president, the first thing we're going to do is secure our border. And until the border is secure, nothing else is going to happen on immigration. And anyone who believes otherwise is either delusional or is not being but honest. But no regrets about being for the Gang of Eight, being part of the Gang of Eight. I went up there to try to solve problems. It would have been easier to sit back and just give speeches and criticize what other people did. I went up there to try to solve problems. Immigration is a big problem. And it's still, it's harder today and worse today than it was three years ago. Your opponents had no trouble last night saying you're not ready to be commander in chief. Straight question, do you think Donald Trump is ready to be commander in chief? Well, I think in order for Donald to pass that threshold eventually at some point, he's going to have to show some in-depth knowledge of the foreign policy issues before us. Up to now, he has not done that. And, uh, you know, he's so new he's to politics. So he's not ready right now. Well, he's new to politics, and so I think he still has time to learn about these things, but he's running out of time. Last night alone, we just had a brief question about North Korea. This is a huge threat. The leader of North Korea is a lunatic. But he possesses long-range missiles that are probably already capable of reaching the United States, most certainly capable of reaching Guam and Hawaii, and not to mention our allies like Japan and South Korea. And this is an, an, uh, an emergent issue, but it's a very dangerous one. He better have an in-depth understanding of that, you, because on your first day in office, you cannot predict what issue will confront you. I know this, of all those people on that stage last night still running for president, none of them has more experience or a better understanding or has proven better judgment on these issues than I have. And right now, Donald Trump does not have that readiness? Well, I, I don't think Donald Trump has answered questions about foreign policy in depth to this point. He didn't know what the nuclear triad was when he was asked a few weeks ago in one of our other debates. And even last night, the most he could say about North Korea was something about China and leverage. So I think that ultimately, I'm not here to pick on other Republicans. I'll let, at the end of the day, the voters make that decision. But I can tell you, if you want to be commander in chief, whether it's Donald or everybody else running, you better show that you understand these issues in depth and that you have some good judgment on them. Uh, people writing about your strategy say you have a 3 two, one strategy, third in Iowa, second in New Hampshire, first in South Carolina. Still on track for a second place here? Well, for, you've never heard anybody in my campaign say anything about that. We wanted to get as many votes as we can and as many delegates as we can. So last week in Iowa, came in third, but we had as many delegates as the second place finisher and one less delegate than the first place finisher. That, this is going to matter in a race like this, potentially. Same strategy in New Hampshire. We want to get as many people to vote for me as possible, and we'll keep moving forward. I can tell you that we've built a campaign that's going to be around in South Carolina, in Nevada, on March 1st and beyond. And I feel very optimistic about where we are going to be once the delegates are tallied, once everyone else, once, and especially once the race is narrowed to two or three people. And nothing from last night changes that? Absolutely not. Right. Well, other than the fact that we raised more money in the first hour of that debate than we did in any other debate. Senator Rubio, thanks for joining thanks us this morning. Thank you.